There is no distance. Hello, and welcome to Women of Hope and Men of Faith on MBCTC in the Northern Berkshires. I am your host, Reverend Susan LaFlam Blocker. I want you to know we are excited that you joined us today, and it is not by chance. You see, God knew you would be tuning in today and that you would need to hear what is being said. You are going through something in your life, and God wants to speak to you. Maybe our speaker is just the one you need to hear it from. We are ordinary people who are living testimonies of what God can and will do in a heart that is yielded to him, even in our brokenness. And that runs from, um, let's see, until May 23rd, okay? So that, and, and I wanted you to know that because we are in that time right now. And it says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the maid servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit. And I just want to say to you, God is pouring out his spirit. And we have to be real careful here because we don't want to deny the spirit of God. Amen? Remember, there's a trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? And I'm going to give you um, the fact that it says... Um, in, the, in God's word, it tells us we better... Forgive things, all things God forgives, but when we blaspheme, blasphemy the Holy Spirit, we best be real careful. And if we deny the Spirit of the living God, then got to be really careful. Be really careful because, and so God says he's going to pour it out upon, you know, um, his servants and his maidservants. And then it continues in verse 32 and says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Those of you, and I think you were all of you that are sitting here, and more, I'm sure there were more because we were able to meet back then. But back in March, remember, the Lord had given me the word that we are part of that remnant. Those that have stood strong, those who have not, you know, walked away are part of the remnant. And we are part of the remnant. And then... Before I introduce our guests, and first of all, um, Miss Cynthia is not here with us today. She had a prior engagement, and I pray God just blesses her, don't you? She is such a mighty woman of God and such a beautiful woman of God. And so, you know, um, her husband Kevin will be with us. But Kevin, I wanted to share with you, God has just been pouring stuff into me this week about you. And I don't know if you read it on Facebook or not, but I'm going to tell you. I said, Lord, what if he doesn't know this? And the Lord said to me, you haven't got to tell him anything because I'm going to tell him. You know, nobody's got to really tell us because God's going to do what he's going to do. Amen. <laughs> but in Isaiah 43, 19, and this is specifically for you, and but also for the church, but today for you, um, Pastor Kevin, is behold... I will do a new thing. New, it, now it shall spring forth. Now. And I'm going to tell you, Kevin, God's been showing me all week long that now is right now. You, God is going to start doing the new in you today, this day, some of the things that you have never 
expected that, oh, well, maybe you will, but it may be confirmation for you. But I, God has shown me he is going to start the new in you today. And it says, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, okay? Now, that is for us also as the church. But specifically, God gave it to me for you today, Kevin, because Kevin moves and, you know, God moves through him, I should say, in healing. But I want you to know that God has showed me he is not only going to move in you through the healing, he's going to use you and move through you in signs and wonders that he is going to use you for miracles that he has never used you for before. And that word is for you today, and I thank you. So with that, I would like to introduce our guest. And our guest today is Kevin Ford. And let's give him a hand to everybody because he is a mighty man of God and he's got some good word today. Amen? I'll give you a social distance word. Woo! <laughs> Somebody give Jesus a hand, huh? Hey, hey. My beloved wife, Cynthia, sends her love. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you today. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, he's appointed me to preach and anointed me to preach good tidings today to those that are humble of heart. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Is this the acceptable year of the Lord? Amen. We're in the new never before now, the neos now, never before time. The wow is in the now. The miracles are in the now. Don't let the stuff of your past draw you out of the now where the miracles are. Right? The past, uh, there's a word called epigenes. That's our memory cells. And sometimes we have negative memory cells that then take the past and it catapults us over the now and infects the future with the negativity of the past. Now, I'm not saying don't remember the past, and I'm not saying don't plan in the future. I'm saying don't let the fake news of the enemy pull you out of the now where the miracles are. Somebody give me an amen. 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 Wow. Yeah, you point to them to, to mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy. Somebody receive the oil of joy right now. It's more than a word. It's a substance. It's the same substance that created the universe. It's the same substance that rose Jesus from the dead. The oil of joy. Ooh, drink it in right there. Wow, wow, thank you, Lord. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Do you think the spirit of heaviness has been trying to come into this country? Do you think that we're under attack in some ways? But guess what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, amen? Right there, and I know he's been coming, that stuff's been coming at me, and it's like, it's get out and you do a happy dance. I mean, it's basically, you start to praise the Lord, you sing the Psalms. And when you're singing the Psalms, you know what happens to the bad guys? You know what it really says to the bad guys as you're singing the Psalms? It's very spiritual. <laughs> and basically, there it is. I can't believe he did that in church. He just did. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow, wow. Come on, Lord. I'm excited to be. He's doing mm, so many things. Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. It's a word for today. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The word deem means to think. He deemed her highly. He deemed him highly. To redeem means to rethink. The Lord has rethought of who you are because of Jesus. That's a deeper meaning of redeemed. He looks at Kevin differently. When he looks at me, he looks at me through the blood of Jesus. That's why they call it good news. He sees Jesus. He doesn't see Kevin. <laughs> That's one of the reasons they call it good news. The same for you, if you wish. I mean, read, we are of the redeemed. Now, this year, he had me go, last year, 19, he had me go to... Um, 
the Jewish scriptures at Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And there's a new trumpeting going on. It was October 1st. September 30th, the end of September, was the Hebrew word is ayin. It's, it's the word for 79. 5779 was the Jewish calendar that ended at the end of September. Okay, it was the end of a decade. Ayin, A-I-Y-N, the, the figure is like this. It's two streams of vision. And Ayin says, see with a clear eye what the Lord is saying. He was setting us up. Because the next day the word is pay, P-E-Y, pay. Right? Whoa. Pay is the vision of an, ex the, the symbol of an expanded mouth. Prophetically he's saying, see what the Lord is saying so then you can with a new authority and an expanded mouth in the spirit resonate what the word of the Lord is saying for this time. Because he is sending revival. He is, we're in a time of transition, a time of transformation. But it's not only externally that we pray and God blesses us and sends it. It's inside of us already. If you've received the Lord, the answer is inside of us. He already sent revival. His name is Jesus the Christ, his son. And it comes from inside as well as from externally. It's already there. So if you've got the word of the Lord, the living word, Jesus Christ in you, and greater is he that's in you that's in the world, then would it not behoove us to release that out into the atmosphere? God's sending revival, in other words, but he's sending it through each and every one of us. I just don't sit on the hillside like they did when Jesus was doing miracles and they all sat there and watched the loaves and fishes and said, oh good, we're getting lunch, isn't this nice, right? No, what he He's doing he's sending it through us so it's not for us to sit back and clap and watch God do something amazing because we prayed really hard no he's doing it through us and now is the time that brings us to January we're still in the Hebrew calendar but then January 1st the Greco-Roman calendar which we celebrate New Year right the, the word is kaf k-a-p-h and the vision is an extended hand an open hand hand and open palm hopefully palm up to receive what the Lord is giving but the word that, that that it's translated into in the English is actually two one is expectancy and the other is restoration now little did we know now as we are March April May and all the things that are happening with COVID-19 and all that foolishness right here we are that that we have the expectancy of restoration greater than before because his word says he takes us to greater. Now, I'm not minimizing the problem. I'm not minimizing and waylaying it. There's a lot of hurt out there. People have lost people, and I'm not minimizing that or pushing that aside in any way. But the Lord reminded me, he gave me a word maybe eight, nine years ago in New Zealand when I was ministering in Wellington, and the word happened to be, of all things, a Mandarin, a Chinese word, and the word was crisis. And Mandarin is a symbolic language. It's made up of symbols, not phonetics, like ours. And many times the two symbols that make up the word, inherent in the two symbols is the deeper meaning of the word. So crisis is made up of two words, wei, W-E-I, and ji, J-I. Wei ji is Mandarin for crisis, right? Wei is danger. Ji is opportunity. Inherent in every danger, in, in every crisis is danger, and opportunity. Don't ignore the danger. Be smart. We're social distancing. We're washing our hands. We're going to have the cleanest hands in the world. <laughs> I'm doing seven, eight times a day. I'm washing my hands. I'm singing the birthday song with my six-year-old grandson, A, B, C, D, because that's about 20 seconds. <laughs> you know, and we're making songs up as we go. And, but, I, but there it is. Well, we're in mass. We're socially distancing. Not because I'm in fear, but because I'm respecting the rule of law, be it exaggerated over blockade. You know, it's like it's the same thing with the news. It's almost, you know, like it's crazy. We 
I mean, that's the prince of power of the air. He's taking the air. We're taking it back. We, the ecclesia, the living body of God, are taking back the atmosphere by releasing the truth, the gospel, the good news into the atmosphere so people can then walk into this pervasive atmosphere of heaven rather than the negative foolishness that's being put out there in the airwaves. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Woo! That's why they call it good news. I want to release something that uh, mother and the faith, uh, father and mother, Jim and Faith Chosa from the Native American apostles from uh, Billings, Montana. They're wonderful people of God. And they've been uh, big in Cynthia and in my life, along with Wayne and Irene Anderson. Irene in heaven now, but they're parents in the faith to us. And this was a word that faith released at the beginning of the year. Wow. Well, it started out with Psalm 107, which affirms Yeshua's authority within the we, the body of Christ. Greater things will we do, right? His body, we need to be his voice in this hour, just as I said, this great need in our nation. We give thanks to the Lord for his good and his miraculous mercy endures forever. Let the miraculously redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now, she being native is using arrows as a symbol, right, of intercession, as if you were sending an arrow to the target, as is her inheritance, her, 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 you know, her, her, her ancestry. The Lord's destined purpose for his pastures is that all men be saved and nurtured and sustained in the ways of his kingdom. In his prophetic words, he commanded us to lift the shield of my redemptive ability and be the voice that will break the power of covenant breaking power and lawlessness across this nation. Just what I said in different words. So we will, as one voice with Yeshua, see, we're co heirs with Christ. He lives in you. You become, you, we own the word of the Lord. We're not God, but we're co heirs. And we own the deeds that those that come forth from those words. That gives us an authority to get out when within that atmosphere of Kaf, receiving what he's saying, right? Releasing it out into the atmosphere and being part in this transformation rather than praying and hoping something happens. He's given us the authority and the power to change things. Wow. That's why when I pray, I don't say please, I say thank you. It's nice to be, you know, courteous with God. Please, no. Thank you. Wow. So we as the church will, with as one voice, with Yeshua and Holy Spirit's witness, as Pastor was saying earlier, through the blood of the Lamb, release arrows of intercession to target the spiritual environment of our nation's people, the nation's health care system, and the leadership of our nation during this present health crisis. In Yeshua, O oh, sing to the Lord, a new miraculous song like we were doing this morning. Praise and glory for the worship team. Thank you, Lord. For he has done marvelous, miraculous things. His right hand, he's prophesying Jesus here in the New Testament, his holy arm has gotten him the miraculous victory. The Lord has made known his miraculous salvation, his miracle righteousness he has opened and showed to the sight of those that don't believe. Psalm 98. Now with Yeshua, we release the arrow of the Lord's light-filled miraculous salvation and redemption into the spiritual environment of our nation in Yeshua upon the people of this nation. And we, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, break the power of fear and panic through the power of light, love, mercy, and grace. Somebody give me an amen. Whoa. Wow. That's, ooh, the Lord speaking through faith, Chosa. We lift up the name of the Lord, Jehovah, our provider, within the spiritual environment of all the members of the body of the Son throughout the nation and awaken the multitude within your body, almighty Yeshua, to stand up and magnify your great eternal light into the households and our communities, into our nation's health care systems. We release through the blood of the Lamb, Jehovah's miraculous wisdom and miraculous knowledge to inspire within the spiritual hearts of genetic scientists and other specialists the 
power to produce the witty medical inventions necessary to destroy any virus that not of the Lord. Thank you. All viruses are not of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And into our nation's leadership, we magnify the light-filled wisdom and knowledge of the great King that through the blood of the Lamb, this miraculous light-filled wisdom and knowledge will surround this leadership, secure this leadership, and protect this leadership from all harm. Give them from your miraculous strength, O Lord, the miraculous courage to lead this nation into the light of the Savior and his redemptive, miraculous ability. Somebody give me an amen. Whoa. Mm, yeah. Woo. We release that word now into the atmosphere, over the airwaves, out into Jesus. Take it as far as you need it to go. Everybody said, whoa. Yeah, it is good to be with you. I was telling Pastor Susan earlier that in the, I wanted to get that out and set an atmosphere here for that because Friday nights, the Lord, one Friday night a month, we have a home, we had a home healing meeting at our home. And we'd have maybe 30, 35 people show up. It was kind of neat and have some fellowship. And, and it went live on Facebook. We started putting it on live on Facebook. People get healed in the house and on Facebook. And so when social distancing happened and we had to stop, you know, uh, meeting in person, uh, what we did was... Um, uh, start doing every Friday night at 7 o'clock live on Facebook from my home and set up a little studio with a camera and lights and new microphones and stuff and uh, going pretty good. What's happened, it's been building, it's been about seven or eight weeks now and people started saying, I know someone with the virus. And they had other things, those cancers and those people that had eyesight rehealed and some lady actually had flat feet and she got, she got arches. It was pretty cool. She sent us a video. You can go on our website and Kevin Ford Ministries and, and, and see the, she actually got, a, it was great. I mean, in the midst of a pandemic, God's given arches. Yeah, he's cool. Nothing's too big for him. I mean, how crazy is that, right? I mean, it's like awesome. No job too big, no job too small. Right? I mean, and so, anyway, so there was this guy named Martin. I don't know Martin. Martin was from Post Falls, Idaho. And a lady named Barbara Earl Bundy knew Martin and his wife. Well, Martin was in the hospital on a ventilator, and they were going to pull the plug because he was dying. Right? And his wife said, no. She was a woman of faith, woman of hope, woman of, you know, men of faith. But she, was, she said, no, it ain't happening. It's not happening. Right? And so Barbara picked that up being a friend of theirs, and I'd met Barbara at a meeting out in Post Falls at uh, um, Oasis Church, Foursquare Church, with Pastor Dan and Chance. And so she said, Kevin, you're having a meeting Friday night. Could you please pray for my friend Martin? They want to pull the plug. He's, he's dying from the, the disease, from the, the virus. We said, sure. So we hammered it. Two days later, he starts turning for the better. Right? We continue to pray. They do a tracheotomy on him. Right? He's getting better. I got a, last week, I received a video that was live, Channel 6 News from Post Falls, Idaho, that picked up the story. They were wheeling Martin out of his ICU into his room with no effects of the disease anymore. They picked up on it, right? We weren't the only ones. There were other people, obviously, but God gets the glory, right? And that was just one. There's been at least five or six of those. There's a guy named... Dan Hogan from Syracuse, New York, who's a fireman, and our friend Ricky D up there in Baldwinsville, the church with Pastor Charity, our friend, said, hey, Kevin, I'm hearing the things that you guys, that God's doing through you guys. Could you please play for Danny Hogan? He's on a ventilator, and it's not, he's not doing well. Sure, so we went at that. Two, within two hours of praying, they realized that the ventilator wasn't hooked up properly. It wasn't working properly. They fixed it, and I get a... A photo of Dan walking into his home three days ago. Clean. Just right there. Praise God. That's God. That's God. That's God. So I'm all about the doctors and nurses. God bless the first line responders. God bless the medical people. God heals from heaven. He also heals from earth. It's not either or. It's and. He can do whatever he wants to do. God is in charge. He can do what he wants to do, but he's looking to use us. He loves us so much. He is wooing his church to be part of the solution. Always been that way, but especially in this season. We are in the, fe We're in the season of the Feast of Trumpets. It's not only a year or a decade, it's a new season where our words carry more authority than they ever did as co-heirs. I mean, big, big, big stuff. 
Now, I'm thrilled because to be here with you this morning, because as I was telling Pastor, I wasn't here to get into my story, but it's his story. But for those, there's a need out there because of the addiction. And addiction isn't only alcohol and drugs. It can be spending. It can be visual things. It can be all kinds of things that we're addicted to that we shouldn't be. Anything that comes between me and my Savior is you know, and it's inordinate, is an addiction. Well, I had that problem. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict from the age of 19 till the age of 38. I'm 69 now. You do the math. <laughs> but God took me from that place of addiction and brought me to where I am here with you today, which absolutely amazes me, right? Because if he does that for me, he can do it with anyone. He gave me the revelation a few years ago, diction, dictionary, right dictionary word add diction adding the wrong sound into your life now i understand alcohol addiction is more than that it's about obsession it's about um the obsession of the mind the compulsion of the body i understand all of that stuff i was homeless on the streets because of that okay but then god picked me up to take up of your bed and rise and every day he made me new in christ immediately right because he's new in me but i have to pray through it every day wash my mind in the water of the word so i I say he makes me more better and less worse every day bad theology but good english because i got stuff you all got stuff we all got stuff stuff sometimes we don't even like to share because if you guys all knew my stuff you might not let me have the microphone you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i'm saying everybody so that's called fig leaves adam and eve call that fig leaves you know forget the fig leaves right and go forward into your you you take wherever you're at Open your heart and your mind to be fully consumed by him. Add a new diction into your life. For those that have drugs and alcohol, yes, God will do what he wants to do. Uh, you know, I did things, I'm not going to get into it to spare some anonymity of some things here on earth, but I drank a lot of bad coffee, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, did a, and, and did a lot of stuff that, that I needed to a day at a time for the Lord to work through my life. So the reason I'm saying all that is no matter where you are, if there's somebody out there that's having a problem or their family members are having a problem, right, we're going to release the sound of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the living word of the Lord, the chain-breaking, mountain-moving, devil-stomping, miraculous word of the Lord into those family members that need the chains to be broken, that they would hear the word of the Lord. Lord, send a huge angel to their bedside tonight and straighten them right out do it however you want to do it but that the new sound would resonate in their bodies mm, yeah and they would walk forward in the true destiny of the inheritance you have put inside them he has released us as it says in colossians from he's brought us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love there are three things that agree on earth as they are in heaven the power that's in the blood of jesus christ the revelation of the word and the witness of holy spirit now the blood is on the doorpost and lintel of the door of our hearts and just like it did in egypt in passover it says passover is the roots of our christian communion as Gentiles, it's the fulfilling of the scriptures in the Old Testament. The, there, it says it speaks about eternity. There is a lamb inside, and the angel has passed over. Cecil D. DeMille got it wrong. He had the green ooze going down the street in that movie. And the church took, I mean, it's the angel of the Lord. God's in charge. It's the angel of the Lord has passed over. Mm, wow. You bring him into the house. It says, stay in the house. You can read it in Exodus. Stay in the house. The angel has passed over. We're at the table of the Lord, where his promises are yea and amen. Every morning I bring my family, my loved ones, ministry partners into the home because the blood is on the doorpost and no weapon formed against them can, shall, or will prosper. I mean, it's like Psalm 91 just released into their lives. The arrow that flies by day or the terror by night shall not bother them. Thank you, Father. 
Right, you're taking them out of the line of fire, put them in stealth under the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's the blood of the power that's in the blood, the revelation, the heart unfolding of the word, not the understanding of it. It's good to re memorize the word. I'm not saying that, but there's a deeper knowing. Did you ever know something you can't, but you can't explain it? You can't explain it, but you know it. Like, is there any sickness in heaven? Is there any poverty in heaven? Try to explain that to an unbeliever. <laughs> right? But you know it. So it goes from understanding with your brain, which is a beautiful thing. I'm not disparaging the brain. God made it. But knowing in my heart. When I know the word, I, I fall back into the inheritance. I fall back into the wonder that is the gospel. Not only am I not ashamed of it, it is awesome, awe-inspiring when I know it. When I'm ministering and you hear me say, come here, God's going to take care of that right now, that's not wishful thinking. That means I have not striven to get to a place. I have fallen back into that heavenly place, that doorway that is a, that's a sign. Pastor said signs of wonders when she was prophesying over me this morning. That's a confirmation of other words I've received recently, by the way, and thank you, I received that. I don't strive to get to the place of miracles. Because when you're trying to get someplace, it means you're not there. You're still trying to get there. So a lot of times, and I think I shared it the last time Cynthia and I were here, I got new age friends, and I do have some. They're wonderful people. They're just plugged into a different power source, right? And, and, and you know, I love them. You know, I, I don't just, I can disagree with them, but I love them. Just because I don't agree with you, it's not a hate crime, by the way. Hello? All right, it's not a hate crime. I don't have to agree with you, but I love you. I might not like you, but I love you. <laughs> right? I let the love of the Father flow through me. Right? Wow. Wow. Mm. The revelation of the word, the heart understanding of the word, and the witness. Witness is a legal term. Witness in a courtroom is a proof producer. The Holy Spirit is producing the proof that the blood of Jesus as the word is revealed is more than enough for any situation in your life. Those are the three things that agree that on, agree on earth as they are in heaven. Those, that's what separates. It's a, it's a dividing line between the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of darkness. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I understand that. We don't hate people. We're coming against powers and principalities. All right? As I said, I may not like them. I don't hate them. And, and I don't have to work love up for them. I just have to let the love of the Father flow through me. I've got to yield. My new age friends ask me what my sign is. That's what I started to say a minute ago, and I say, my sign is yield. <laughs> and they go, well, well what do we don't do this. You know what I mean? We don't do that monthly. You know? Well, what do you mean? Well, we just, no, we don't do that. You guys do that. We don't do that. Well, why not? Well, we get every month. You only get one month. You're getting cheated. <laughs> I yield to the Holy Ghost constantly. I yield to the sound, because the enemy's always coming in, roaring like a lion. He's always trying to get my attention to pull me out of the now, trying to get me worried about something, you know, that hasn't even happened yet. It's not even a lie. The future isn't a lie. It hasn't happened, and yet I go there. I'll, if, if I haven't got a problem, sometimes I'll make one up, <laughs> just, so, cause, just so I'll feel comfortable. <laughs> I don't know about you know, because I lived in chaos most of my life, having been an alcoholic. Right? I lived in chaos, so I was comfortable with chaos. You know, I couldn't take care of the, I could take care of big problems. I'm good in a real crisis. But don't, the little foxes get me goofy. I don't know about you, but I, I, I could get tripped up by the little stuff. And the enemy's always throwing little stuff in the way. The pastor was mentioning this morning, she said, I know those, you know, I have days like that in the morning when my disease, the craziness gets up about 10 minutes before me, he's doing push-ups waiting for me to wake up. <laughs> you know, it's like, and you're getting out of bed and, oh, you know. <laughs> my wife said, did the grouch wake up this morning or the good guy? Oh, it's the good guy, honey. Oh, no, I'm just, I just, I do a 180 right away. Right? Wow. Ooh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow. Ooh, ooh. I got a word. I asked, the Lord's been doing new things since November. I was in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I used to say, well, I'm doing the healing thing. I don't do the prophetic thing. And the Lord says, stop it. 
You're prophesying negatively. Yes, you do. I put that in you. All right? No, I don't, everybody prophesies. That doesn't mean everybody's a prophet. You've got to go through certain things and walk with people that are prophets to connect and get what you get. So he started sneaking up on me. Jehovah Sneaky would, would start getting me and realizing, oh, I am prophetic. All right. So I'm in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and he says, I want you to give this word. He says, somebody who lives across the river, now that's Minnesota, Grand Forks River is right there. It's about two miles from the church. We're at Ozana Full Gospel Church there with Pastor Jeanette. And, and he says, somebody lives across the river. He says, and their initials are RM, and it's a man. And he's had a problem with the circulatory system, and I want you to call it out because I'm healing him. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, you talk about stepping out on a limb, right? It's like, you know, oh, yeah, I got faith. Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> you know, one of those deals. I must be making it up. Anybody ever thought that? You get a word, and, and then you don't give it, and someone else gave it, and you go, oh, because you really did hear, right? So I very boldly give the word out. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, and uh, guy raises his hand and back, Gary, this guy I knew. He says, that's my brother. We live together across the river in East Grand Forks. His name is Ron Machand, and he just had a stroke. Wow. I went, that's crazy. Thank you, Lord. And he's done about every time I ask. It's not like I got to get in a certain atmosphere. You know, I've had him driving in the car. I was driving to the uh, Valacia to Hope Chapel back in the fall, it was December, to a, a merge, a worship meeting. And uh, I'm going by a new restaurant. It's an Asian restaurant on Route 9 and 20, not too far from my home, called Soho. So about 30 seconds before, I said, oh, yeah, Lord, I'm going to a meeting tonight. Give me a word for somebody. So I go, Soho, Soho, Soho. I'm thinking, is, is it about Japanese food? Uh, is it Soho? That's like an acronym for South of Houston in New York City. Anything south of Houston Street is the Soho District. Now, it's not New York City. Well, what is it? And he speaks to me in words. He goes, so ho, 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 doesn't float your boat. Which is before Christmas. Ho, 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 doesn't float your boat. And then he gives me the word. He, said, he says, I just, I, I listen. I don't second guess it. I just let it roll as stupid as it might seem. So I'm setting you up for the word he's giving me here, right? And he says, okay. He says, so ho, ho, somebody is going to a Christmas family function and they're not looking forward to it. Sometimes family functions, you know, it's like, eh. He says, you're not looking forward, but the Lord says go because you're spiritual and very likely your financial inheritance is involved in this visit. So I give the word and nobody says anything. And then a lady comes up to me at the end and goes, that's hubby. He doesn't want to go. And yes, it's involved in inheritance. And I'm going, wow. Wow. I say this not to say, look at me. I'm saying we're in that season of Ayin, hear what the Lord is saying, and pay with an expanded voice. It's not just for me. I was just crazy enough to believe that he's doing it. It's for you too. Put your hands up and just receive. Open your hearts to receive an impartation of a new word. Receive the ability to allow the Lord to speak to you the way he wants to speak to you. He's made you a certain way. Don't do what I do. Do what you do right be the gift that you are the way he made you and believe that he made fearfully and wonderfully made you the way he made you and he will speak to you the way that you will hear it and open the doorways of those words now that he would speak to you so that you can then resonate his word with an expanded authority in this season where a hungry and desperate word need, world needs to hear his voice yes through you Two. Somebody give me an amen. Wow. 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 I get the Holy Ghost goosebumps. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. So this is our so I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Women of faith, men of hope. I'm going to be there. And I had about a half a cup of coffee in me, and I got one eye open. I got up early so to make sure that the Lord would give me what I wanted to say today because we were, we were on last night, and I got last night last night. And I was, went to bed late. I was still vibrating, and I was trying to sleep. And at 11.30, quarter or 12, I was, the Lord says, I'll get you in the morning. I'll get you up early. You'll be refreshed, and you'll get a word for the people. I said, okay, because he does that a lot, and so with me. And so I get up, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, give me not only what I'm going to preach, but give me a word for somebody specifically. Would you? Would you? Could you? Now, this may be for somebody here. 
or it may be for somebody on the airwaves. I shared it with Pastor earlier. But I get the word Bill Ups. And I came from Boston. And the Boston Celtics are a basketball team we've probably all heard of. And there was a guy who was not all that known, but I like the name. He wasn't like Larry Bird, famous like Larry Bird or Kevin McHale or Bill Russell. He was Chauncey Billups was his name. I get the word Billups. Chauncey was okay, but he wasn't a superstar. So I said, okay, Lord, what's that? What's that got to do with anything? I'm thinking, eh, give me another word. <laughs> like that, what, what are we going to do with this one? And he goes, no, someone has a business that has to do with sports. See the basketball thing, the connection? Right? And there are accounts due. There are bills up in the air, bill ups. Oh, the Lord says, don't pray for the money to come that's due, but pray for the prosperity of those who owe you the money, especially in this time of downturn. Pray for the people. Now, that's, that's no stretch in that word. That's a good eternal word right there. But specifically for someone, and he'll make, he says, pray for the prosperity of those that owe you the money, and he will make sure you are more than blessed. He didn't say that they would pay the bill. They might, but he's saying you will be blessed. Many times he'll bless us in other areas. So there's a big difference between riches and wealth. Everything the that wealth is the anointing. Wealth is the atmosphere of heaven come to earth. And from wealth, riches flow. Riches are money, tradable goods, coin, dollars, jewels, whatever. The fact is, but wealth is the atmosphere of his presence on earth. Everything the Israelites had need of was in the cloud of his presence. Cloud by day as if fire by night. So seek the kingdom first, which is not a place. Kingdom is his rule and his reign, his power and his authority, the dom, the dominion of the king who lives in you. Therefore, you carry the kingdom wherever you go. And when you focus on the kingdom, it appears. Spend time with him in his presence. Presence, you'll get the knowledge of witty inventions. You'll get, you, sometimes it's not like the Brinks truck is going to show up. Sometimes it does, but if you're waiting for it, you might be cold and waiting a few seasons out by the mailbox. My grandmother used to say, pray for, you know, she'd say, pray for provision, but pick up a rake and head for the garden. <laughs> God will meet you right where you are, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. So, and there may be two people involved in this business, maybe like partners. Make sure that you're in unity together and then dedicate or rededicate this business as it starts up again. Or maybe it's still going, but rededicate it as the doors and the things open again. I was going to say the floodgates, so I'll prophesy. As the floodgates to business open up, the bad news is no, it's not going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be, right? Right? Rededicate your business to him as a kingdom business and plant the first fruits offering where he tells you to. First fruits offering is a different offering and it's about entering the doorway to a different economy. It's not, an, we get ceiling, of a, the economy has a ceiling on earth. Heavenly economy does not have a ceiling. The Latin word for sow, and this is not an offering message, okay? The Latin word for sow, S-O-W, is prospero, the word we get prosperity from. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave first. You want to be like God? It's about giving, and not just money. It's sowing your life, your attention, your focus into where he wants you to go now. How do I know that? Ayin. See what the Lord is saying. And then resonate it, which means more than agree with it. Agree with it in your actions. Where do you want me today? Where do you want me in the season? How is it going to be different in our ministry, Lord? I, I don't know, but a day at a time, I'm not going to take any failures or any problems of the past or alcoholism or anything else. I'm going to forget about it. So my friend Vinny says, forget about it. And I'm going to catapult, right, into the now.
I'm not going to let him catapult me into the future. I'm going to let him place me right in the now so I'll know what he wants me to do. Because with the word provision, again, Latin, pro, the prefix pro means for. Pro vision means when I am for his vision, pro vision brings provision. My prosperity is where he wants me to be. He will bless me many times. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll bless me. In the early days when I first became a Christian, I love being a Christian. I, love, I get parking spaces. Do you ever, get, ever pray for parking spaces in a busy place? I mean, it's like, I get parking spaces. This Christian thing is really cool. It's awesome. Eek. Parking space. I'm a Christian, man. It's like I get parking spaces. Then about two years later, I'm late one day, and God, I need a parking space. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, are you, are you busy in Africa or something? I need a parking space. <laughs> Hello? Jesus, could I please get a parking space? I'm late for my appointment. Kevin, leave early. Grow up. <laughs> Just like a child. You do things for a baby, you do things for a toddler, you do things for a, a child and, a, and an adolescent, and bit by bit, you release them and they do things on their own, the same with us. God wants us not only to be saved, he wants us to be mature sons and daughters so that we can carry his word in a way that he would want us to do and grow into the fullness of his identity, his destiny for us. Somebody give me an amen. Wow. So anybody that resonates with that word about the business, about a sport business, it could be a sporting good, there could be a partner involved, please let pastor know so that I can then get the testimony on that because I heard that very clearly. It came very smoothly, as crazy as it might have sounded. The Lord has been speaking to me that way because it's a word of encouragement and it's not about me. It's about him and you connecting to his word in your destiny because there's a blessing in that. This covenant, covenant, come together. I used to pray in the early days of being a Christian, and when things didn't happen, I'd get a little upset with God and tap my foot and go, am I praying wrong? He says, no, it's covenant. You're supposed to pray and you're supposed to listen. There's two-part deal here. You do what you do, I do what I do. I learned that early on in recovery. It's called the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. That's your job. The courage to change the things I can. My job. And the wisdom to know when it's your job and my job. When I try to do your job, you no. Know, God says, I want you to grow up and you do your job a bit at a time here. And we'll walk together in a victorious lifestyle. Not perfect, but victorious. Amen? Mm. Now, who came here today with a physical need? So anybody got a, 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 I heard foot, feet, feet. God's been doing feet things. Is it a foot? Okay, we're going to socially distance. I'm going to come down, if I may. And you put your, you lay, you lay hands on your feet. And, okay. 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 What's his name? Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul. Okay, I'm going to put my hand out to you. You put your hand out to Paul. We, we, we would do a little lightning rod intercession. We're, we're, not me. God, through all of us, is going into her, and she's going into Pastor Paul, right? Okay. So just a minute now. We don't have to say the right words. It's the anointing that heals. Right here, right now. It's the anointing that heals. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul, the total being, and health to the bones. Now, I'm not rewriting the Bible, but let me add muscles, ligaments, tendons, nerves. Right there. Mm. And thank you, Lord, that the false pain of the toes that were left, taken, there's no false pain there. That's in the spirit. So we release the word of the Lord into Paul, Pastor Paul's spiritual heart and his body. Now, pain, you are but a symptom. 
You point to the problem. I'm sure you've done a very good job pointing to the problem, but you're not needed now because Jesus said, and everybody with me, it is finished. Ooh, wow. Nahum 1, 7 to 9. Prophet Nahum, Old Testament, we're releasing it to be fully filled, filled fully in the new, fulfilled, full, fi fully filled in the new. This is the word of the Lord. This is not wishful thinking. And this is for Pastor Paul. I, the Lord, shall make an utter end of this affliction, and it shall not return a second time. Somebody give me an amen. Ooh, wow, wow, wow. Ooh, wow. Ooh. I'm going to feel the love of the God right now go through you. Whew, right now. Begin to feel the warmth in your body for him, for the two are one. The two are one in the spirit of holy matrimony. Now you're receiving for him. It's going from his heart, the Father's heart, through our hearts into you. And now it's being multiplied through us, magnified through you into him right now. Begin to feel the warmth of the Father's love. Begin to feel even now in you a warmth of the Holy Spirit going into your husband's feet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. us leave him now, as is the word of the Lord. We are co-heirs. I was set in an atmosphere. We own the word. We own the deeds that those words provide. Right there. Whew. Wow, wow, wow. I'm not a wishful thinker. The Lord's word is true, and the devil's just a stinker. <laughs> it's okay to laugh and giggle. God's taking care of it, you know what I mean? Ooh, jocularity doesn't mean you don't care. It means you know the Lord is taking care of it. They laughed and they sang and danced in front of the advancing army because they knew who they were in Yahweh's eyes. Wow. Doesn't mean you have to be silly to heal, but it means don't worry about the outcome. Do anything you can do. I do anything I can do to step out of the way so I don't mess up the anointing. Sometimes I sing, tell a little story. Jesus called them parables, right? And get out of the way and let the love of the Father come through. That's Healing School 101 from where I stand. Amen? Wow, who else? I saw another hand. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. And her sister can be there with her today, and so they're going to watch it on mainstream. Uh, and so Wilma and Tracy and, Wilma and, Tracy. and both of them did the cellular. Cellular, that's the, okay, that's the word he gave me, feet, right there. Yeah. We were five and a half feet, but I backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a little Kevy coming out to play. <laughs> Lord, your word is true. Hey, hey, you told Jeremiah, I will bring you a health and a cure. I will reveal to you the abundance of peace and truth. That's Jesus. He's prophesying Jesus through Jeremiah. And here we are now at the other end in the new covenant, getting to watch that word come to fruition right now. And Tracy and Wilma, we say thank you, Lord, for your, your daughters, our sisters in Christ. The word goes across time and space into the eternal now where you live. Father, you have no problem with time and space. You created it just like the Roman legionnaire was there. And he said, just say the word and my servant shall be healed and Jesus said no greater faith have I found in Israel and so here we are now you're no respecter of persons your word is eternal no beginning no end we stand on that word powered by the Holy Spirit and say cellulitis you're a thing of the past in these two women we say thank you that the power of the in the blood in the blood through the blood of Jesus and in the light of the Holy Spirit we now release John 1 4 in Jesus was life sub Substance, creation and the life was the light of men let the light overshadow the darkness displace the darkness that's what I was about to say earlier mm, everybody give me an amen 
Ooh, wow, wow, my head was moving so fast I went down rabbit trails and forgot where I was earlier. But wrestle against flesh and blood, that word wrestle today, we know what that means. But in the Greek, Paul wrote that to Ephesus, which was a Greek city, it was actually the largest church on the planet until Paul Yonggi Cho created the church and grew the church in South Korea. But Ephesus was, was Greek, and so Paul would speak to them with Greek um, What's the word? Analogies. Thank you. Took me a minute. Mm. So, mm. wrestle then had a different connotation. Greek was the beginning, Greece was the beginning of the Olympics. And maybe, if, if not the first sport, it was one of the first sports was wrestling. Different than the WWF and all the craziness that goes on now. If you like that, I didn't mean to be rude, but the fact is, is there it is. But this was different. This was more of a real sport. And the word wrestle was more, the deeper meaning was to displace one's opponent off the mat. We're not, we're, when we wrestle, we're not fighting against powers and principalities even. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're not, that leaves us with powers and principalities. I don't want to wrestle a principality. That's Paul, what's his name? Paul, John, Paul, John Paul Jackson wrote a book, who's in heaven now, said, Needless Casualties of War. Don't go to the high places and start screaming at principalities. It doesn't, it's not good for your inheritance. Right? It's not, it doesn't work well. But if I displace the powers of darkness with the light, my job is to resonate the light. The English word is sonoluminescence, sound becoming light. It's a, it's a fact, it's a scientific fact that when sound is resonated to a certain decibel, it becomes light. That's science. It's science agreeing with first chapter of John. And the word became flesh. The wah sound became substance. Sounds new agey, but it's not. It's old agey. We had it first. <laughs> God bless, right? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our guest today and that in some way your life was touched and you were encouraged with your walk with Jesus Christ. Know that choosing to walk with Jesus is the most important and the best decision you will ever make. Know that he loves you enough to die for you. And when he was nailed to that cross, he paid the price for your sins. If you haven't yet, won't you ask him to come into your life today? All you need to do is say, Jesus, I know you died for me on the cross. And I would ask you, please forgive me for all my sins and to lead me into life everlasting. I thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the grave and that you are alive in heaven, making an eternal home for me. If you prayed this prayer or something similar, know that you are now a part of the family of God and that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. God desires that none should perish, but have everlasting life. Know you are welcome to contact us with any questions or prayer requests that you may have. We would gladly welcome you to join us on the second Saturday of each month at 9 a.m. at Jacob's Well in Cambridge, New York where the love of Jesus Christ flows through, through those who are there. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.